going back to the book of Ephesians. Going back to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. One verse of scripture, verse number 20. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20. And I should never, ever have to be pumped up in the middle of a pandemic. That should never have to happen. <laughs> Not in the middle of a pandemic. should never have to be pumped up. should never have to be reminded of the goodness and the favor of God, the hand of God. After everything we've been through before, even before a pandemic. Ephesians chapter 3, one verse of scripture, verse number 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Say amen to the reading of God's word. Uh, today I'm going to teach, I'm going to preach with this thought in our hearts and in our minds, the power of alignment. The power of alignment. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence that's here. Thank you for the prayers that's going forth. The worship that's gone forth, the praises that's gone forth. Now, God, we ask you to ready our hearts and our minds that we might be able to receive your engrafted word that can help us, that can strengthen us, equip us, empower us, encourage us, that can do what only you can do. Speak to us. Our hearts are ready. Our minds are ready. Our spirits are prepared to receive, God, this word, God, that can be able, it has the potential, God, to be able to, to catapult us for the rest of our rest of our year and the rest of our lives if we put it down in our heart and in our soul we ask you to speak to us as only you can rid us of every distraction every hindrance anything that looks to block and stop the word of the lord from having a free course in jesus matchless name amen 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 you can be seated presence of the almighty god type down the screen for me the power the power of of alignment the power of alignment It's this gentleman that I've told you about before by the name of Julian Ellis Morrison, who every day would dress up as a homeless individual, and he would simply um, go door to door selling razor blades and soap and shampoo. After he would work every day, he would simply return back home to his mansion. <laughs> and he would put on his formal attire, and then he would catch a plane often to Paris just simply to go and spend the evening there. This particular gentleman, Mr. Julius Morrison, who is not a figment of our imagination, but is a legitimate person. Uh, I believe he passed away back in the late 70s. Uh, but he was an individual that had a lot of money, uh, but decided to live beneath what his status was. He was an individual that had a lot of resources, but because of his resources, he did not allow the resources that he had to dictate what he would do every day. Uh, what am I trying to tell you? That just as Mr. Ellis, um, Mr. Morris has uh, all had all of those resources and he lived beneath going door to door selling razors and shampoo and would simply dress like a, a beggar every day. There are many of us that have buku resources in heaven. Uh, there are many of us that have, have access to all that God has given us, but yet and still we're, leave, we're living beneath what it is that God has allotted for us. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't want to live beneath what it is that God has allotted for me, but I want everything that God has in store for me. Everything that belongs to me, I want it all. Every single thing. But in order for many of us to into to, to enter into what it is that God has for us in order for us to be able to enjoy to pull on all of the resources of God all of the riches as Paul calls it in the book of Ephesians and, and riches not speaking of cash and clothes and cars no uh, but the riches that we can have access to is everything that God says belongs to us in order for us to do that we have to bring our lives in proper alignment we have to bring our lives in proper alignment I'm grateful uh, because this is our year of alignment there, there were some things that fell apart there were some things that, that went into shambles. There's some things that, that we didn't have an opportunity to enjoy, some things that we did not have an opportunity to do. There's some things that we thought we were going to walk in and some things that we thought we were going to be able to conquer and be able to mark off our bucket list, but because of circumstances, because of things beyond our control, we were not able to flow in some of the areas that we thought we needed to flow in, but I just believe that everything God does, God does it for a reason, that there are no incidents 
coincidence or accidents in God, but God does everything according to his plan and he does everything according to his purpose. So if I didn't attain the thing or walk in the thing, it was just simply because I wasn't ready for it yet. Uh, can I tell you just simply, that, just that simple. I, I don't need to lose no sleep. I don't need to be able to worry. I don't have to get nervous. I don't have to feel like I miss anything. I didn't miss my moment. didn't miss my season. I just simply wasn't ready for it. And if I'm not ready for it, God, please don't give it to me. If I'm not ready for it, I don't want it to destroy me. I don't want it to pull me out of your plan and pull me out of your will. But God, everything that belongs to me, God, I want to be ready for. And God said because of the fact that many of us in our lives were off, we were off, we were off. We were not in proper alignment. We were little, little topsy-turvy. It was a little all over the place. God said, I'm bringing you into alignment. This, this year of alignment, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to Lady C, Pastor C, at, at, at the end of last year and spoke this alignment. Look what she says that encompass. She said much more than this, but I grabbed this. And I didn't tell I was going to use this. I just snatched it from her because she steals my stuff too. So anyways, I can pre- if it's my wife, I can preach her stuff as much as I want to. So look, it says God says that this year of alignment will be a new journey. New opportunities and new doors. Come on, somebody. Y'all, y'all, want, y'all don't receive that. Y'all want to receive that. I'm saying this, this year of alignment, it, it, it'll be new, a new journey. It'll be a new journey. It'll be new opportunities. It'll be new doors. But, but, but I've learned whenever it is that God gives us new, uh, takes us on a new journey, when he takes us on a trip, whenever God exposes us to new opportunities and new doors, come on, there, there, there is opposition. There's always something there to try to pull us back. There's always something there to try to stop us from enjoying the journey. And that's what God speaks over our life. He told us in 3 John 2, he says, I wish above all things that thou that thou mayest prosper and your soul may prosper. That word prosper simply means to have a very good journey. I, I don't know about you, but I made up in my mind because I'm a child of God because I love God and I walk with God and I honor God that I'm going to have a good journey. And my, my journey may not go the way I wanted to go. Things may not go the, the, it may not go as planned. I may not be where I think I ought to be. I may not have what I thought I was going to have, but if I'm, if I'm still alive and I'm still here, it's going to be a very good journey. Come on somebody. We got to change our mindset and change the way that we feel and look at what it is that God is doing. God says he's going to give us, uh, it's going to be a new journey, new opportunities and new doors. But with every door there is opposition. With every door there's going to be trouble. With every door there's going to be something that I need to do because the devil does not want me to be able to walk into what it is that God has for me. And here even my flesh does not want me to get myself conditioned to be able to do what God has for me. And this is what God is saying to us today truth and love nation God is wants to show us and to unveil to us the power of alignment that what that these things that are hindering me these things that are obstacle to me these things that are standing in my way once I remove these things or once or once I do these things we'll understand and we'll see how God will unleash his power in our lives I told you last week that I love this book of Ephesians I really should have started in chapter one now I'm backing up I really should have started in chapter one because here the apostle so Paul lays out for us so plainly and so so delicately the plight of the believer. The book is six chapters. It's literally divided into two parts. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. It's all about telling the people of God who we are. It's just simply telling us about orthodoxy. Just telling us what we ought to believe. Who we are in the things of God. And then chapters, chapters four, five, and six is simply how we walk out what it is that God has said belongs to us. We have orthodoxy and then the last part of the book is orthopraxy how we ought to practice it how we ought to walk it out how we ought to apply it to our lives and Paul tells us in this book that there are many resources there there's a potential for power there's potential for riches there's potential for energy there's potential for whatever heaven has to be active and alive in my life but I must be in alignment the first thing I'm going to tell you today I got to get right to it y'all want to praise today so I got to get right to it the first thing is that proper alignment, look at this, unlocks potential. When, when I'm properly aligned, proper alignment unlocks potential. Yes, it does. It unlocks potential. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1, look what Paul says. He said, for this reason, look what he says, for this reason. He says, I, Paul, for, for, for this reason, I, Paul. He said, for this reason, for this reason, I, Paul. You, you don't think that's a lot. You don't think that's really important. But Paul is telling us something. Paul is getting ready to explain something to this church at Ephesus 
says. And Paul is saying that it's a cause. It's a reason that I'm getting ready to un unfold this and getting ready to show you what God desires to do in your life. Paul is, is making mention of something. I told you anytime we're studying the word of God and anytime you, we're looking at the text, if Paul or anyone says therefore or says for this reason for me to be able to grab everything that the individual is saying, I need to back it up a little bit. I need to catch your context on what Paul is saying. So in chapter 2, Paul is explaining to the church at Ephesus the mystery of God. He's explaining to the church of Ephesus what God has done to bring the Gentiles and the Jews together and make them one man. So Paul, he just got done unveiling, he just got done unveiling and revealing to the people of God the ultimate eternal purposes of God, how God has called us together to live together in unity. Let's look at chapter 2 a little bit and see what Paul was talking about. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. Y'all don't mind me use the Bible, right? I'm a, I'm a teacher, preacher. I'm a treacher. Come on, y'all say treach, treacher. Come on, I'm a, I'm a treacher. I'm a te I need the Bible. I need the Bible. Look, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 say, remember, look what Paul says, remember that you were at times, he said, at, at that time separated from Christ. And it alienated. I don't know if this verse of scripture be applicable to anybody in here, but I know it's applicable to me. At one point in time, I was alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers. And she said, he says, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Pa Paul said at one point in time, he said, we, we were without hope. At one point in time, we were strangers. We were not covenant keepers with God. Verse 13, he said, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were afar off have been brought brought near by the blood of Christ so we were away from the things of God we come on we talking about the power of alignment there was no way I can be able to enjoy what God had or God had in store because I wasn't lined up properly I was away from God anybody want to want to admit that you was unsaved before you were saved anybody want to admit that you used to shut the club down anybody used to admit you used to wait for them to say last call for alcohol anybody want to admit that you used to do some things that you're not proud of you used to engage in some things that you that you're not proud proud of the key is used to come on there's something you, you you mean tell me you don't got no useless you mean you mean tell me you you everything everything you're under construction in every area of your life come on my friend no there's some things that you got to say used to i used to act like that i used to say that i used to walk that way i used to talk that way there ought to be some uses and paul said you used to be away from the thing of god the family of god he said but now god has brought you near by the blood of christ look at verse 14 he says for he himself is our peace not a man, not a job, not a house, not a car, but he himself, Jesus Christ, is our peace who have made us both one. Look at this. One and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. What is Paul saying? Paul is unveiling to the people of God what God's church looks like and this is what God's church should look like that the Jew, that the Gentile that makes no difference your nationality, makes no difference your social status, that we ought to come together and we ought to be one. Oh, in this message, so a for the day and the time in which we're living in, the way we've seen just last week, that how individuals can march into our capital and march on Washington and be able to come and just overtake a capital. Come on, just go in and just do what they want to do just because they're not happy with the result. And you got one side of the story saying it's a coup, one side of the story saying everything was rigged, one side of the story saying that they, we we're going to stand for our democracy, and the other side of the individual just simply says, But Black Lives Matter. The other side just simply says, Oh, I can't breathe. The other side just simply said, oh, we just want our voices to be heard. And li literally this election, like none other, has divided our country into half. Oh, but come on, people of God. We should not get caught up in all the madness. We should not get caught up in all the things that's going on. Oh, because can I tell you, it makes no difference who the president is. It makes no difference what they decide to do with the Capitol. It makes no difference what who's occupying oh, Congress. It makes no difference who how, many, how they pack the court out. It makes no difference whenever it is that my life is properly aligned with God, that my life, come on here, is not contingent upon what's going on in this world. I shouldn't get caught up in all that drama. I shouldn't get caught up in all of that foolishness. We ought to know what's going on. We have a Bible in one hand and an iPad in the other. We ought to know what's going on. But I need to learn not to allow what's out there to affect what's going on in here. And come on, people of God, we cannot allow ourselves to be divided. Come on, just because I say that I'm a Democrat, that shouldn't cause you to be divided. If you say you're a Republican, that 
shouldn't cause us to be divided. Come on, if God is your father, then you are my brother. Come on, I'm preaching already. If God is your father, if Jesus is your savior, you're my brother, you're my sister. I don't care if you're, I don't care if you're on the blue side. I don't care if you're on the red side. I don't care what it is. Come on, we're still supposed to be the people of God. And I cannot allow this moment. And it get me so pulled into, so sucked into. I keep telling y'all about all them, uh, not, not ours. We got some legit parking lot prophets. But I keep telling you about all these parking lot prophets that prophesy that the president's going to win. And I saw another one just yesterday just saying, I don't think the president's going to make it. I don't think elect Biden, President elect Biden's going to get sworn in. And all this propaganda, all this stuff, just because they prophesied. You know what he's saying? Just because they prophesied that President Trump was going to win again. Now, all of a sudden, now they're saying, I don't think President, I don't know. I Come on, can I can I tell you? I don't give a John Brown if it come out to go help me here. What, 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 what does it matter? What am I what am I saying? We, it makes no difference. This is this, oh my god, y'all got me all up on this. Can I tell you the, the, the scripture says the scripture says the scripture says the scripture said that he has he has brought us together. Verse 14 again. He has he has brought us together and torn down the wall of hostility. I can't have peace out there. Listen to me. If I don't have peace in here. <laughs> See, see, since he is my peace, I'm not getting caught up in all the hostility. I don't, I don't got to prophesy. I don't got, I don't got to say this and say that just to try to get the people on my bandwagon. But no, we just need to stick to the scripture and stick to the word of God. And here Paul goes on and say, verse 22, he says, through him, he said, look, what, look what Paul said, through him, through, through Jesus, you Gentiles, and anyone, let me give you a quick lesson, anybody who's not of Jewish descent, anyone who's not Jewish born, come on, we, that means that you are a Gentile, I is a Gentile. Come on, he said, through him you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. So in other words, Paul said, man, God has pulled us together. God has pulled, he said, for this reason. That's why Paul, Paul went back. He, when he's building on a point that he's talking about. He just unveiled to them what the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is. He just unveiled that, there, that you all were hostile. You all were separated at one point in time in your wall. It was Jews versus the Gentiles. It was Gentile versus Jews. But now Paul is saying, now God has brought us together as one family. And Paul goes on and says in verse 31, he says in verse chapter 3, verse 1 rather, he says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ on behalf of you Gentiles. Look what he says. He says, for this reason, he's getting ready to go to a point. He's getting ready to explain something, but we need to figure out what he's talking about. He's pulling these Gentiles and these Jews together and saying, this is the body of Christ. And Paul is saying, listen to me, Gentiles. He says, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ on your behalf. In other words, God has me incarcerated for your embitterment. God has me going through something so you can be able to have access or you can be able to get properly aligned to the things of God. Here, here Paul, Paul was the apostle to the, to the Gentiles. Look at in his infancy, in the initial call, Acts chapter 9, verse 15. Look what Jesus told him when he met him on that road to Damascus. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before where? The Gentiles and kings and to the children of Israel. This is Jesus. He's speaking and he's, he's giving instruction and he's telling he's telling early in Paul's early in Paul's call or he's telling that man that man of God Ananias that, that Paul is chosen and he's saying to him go and I want you to go and get Paul I want you to go and I want you to minister to him I want you to go and I want you to help him I want you to build him up encourage him because he's chosen he's a chosen vessel he, he's chosen to preach to the Gentiles this is in Paul's call so in other words Paul was called to the Gentiles the people that the Jews despised the people people that the Jews hated. They literally called them dogs. They literally looked down on them. They literally didn't want no part of them. They literally wouldn't even walk through their town. They wouldn't walk through their city. They'll go all the way around, cross the river, over the river and through the woods, come all the way back, back around, cross the river again, just not to walk through Gentile territory. They hated one another, but God told Paul that they, you are chosen to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. In other words, Paul, there are people that are assigned to you there are people that are assigned to you yeah, yeah. there are people that are assigned to you and in order for them to get what it is that God has for them they have to be properly aligned and when they're properly aligned their alignment will unlock some potential it'll unlock some potential look look as Paul is heading to Jerusalem they don't want him to go but Paul knows he needs to go because God told him he needs to go look in Acts chapter 21 verse 10 he's the, the, the scripture says while we were staying for many days a prophet named Agabus came down from Judah 
Look what it says. Verse 11. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound and bound his own feet and hands and said, thus says the Holy Spirit. This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Verse 12, when we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. So listen, they, 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 Agabus, this prophet, this man of God, takes Paul's belt, takes Paul, uh, Paul's, uh, takes Paul's, what the word I'm looking for? He, he takes Paul's belt. I just use that. He takes Paul's belt and he wraps his belt around him and said that, Paul, you're getting ready to suffer. You're getting ready to go through don't go to Jerusalem because here there's something that is waiting for you there's something that here that's going to happen so this is what Agabus said Agabus doesn't necessarily tell him not to go he's just telling him what's about to happen but look what happens as a result of what Agabus said verse 13 then look no no, no verse 12 rather verse 12 says when we heard this we and all and we and the people there urge him not to go up to Jerusalem. So they heard this and they said, Paul, don't go, don't go, don't go. Listen to this. This is so this is so good because God had already told Paul what he needed to do. And now a man of God, a legit man of God tells him that when you go to Jerusalem, there's going to be trouble. The people that are in the room hears what is about to happen. And now they're telling Paul not to go. And here you, you would think now you, it's, the Holy Spirit revealed this to Agabus. The Holy Spirit told Agabus to tell Paul that, that, that what's going to happen. But key in, he didn't tell him not to go. He just said, what's about to happen to you? And Paul is saying, look what Paul's response. I love this. Verse 13. Then Paul answered, what are you doing? Weeping and breaking my heart. For I am ready not only to be in prison, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is not speaking out of pride. He's not speaking out of arrogance. Paul is speaking because God has already told me what I need to do. And the prophet just confirmed the fact that when I get ready to go to Jerusalem. See, that's what true prophecy ought to do. It shouldn't wreck, it shouldn't wreck your life. True biblical prophecy, it speaks to, it, it'll, it'll speak to something. See, nobody can come and speak a word over me. And it causes me to pack up and move to Montana and cause me to divorce my wife and leave my family because they see me being married to somebody else or, or they see something in my future. No, when you speak a word, it ought to speak something into my spirit. It ought to be some type of agreement. It ought to be some kind of check in my spirit that God has already downloaded. Sure, God can be able to show you some things. Sure, God can be able to reveal some things. Sure, God can foretell. Oh, but whenever we look at someone just prophesying to me as an individual, it shouldn't wreck my world and wreck my life and cause me to stop whatever it is I'm doing when I'm already in God's plan, when I'm already in God's will, when I'm already doing what God has called me to do. And Paul said, why are you trying to break my heart? I'm called to go to Jerusalem. What is pastor trying to tell you? I'm trying to let you know something that in order for Paul to get ultimately to the people that he was called to, he had to go through some things. And Paul was at a point to where he was locked down, but God locked him down so he can unlock some things in the people he was assigned to. Good God Almighty. Paul, Paul had to be incarcerated in order to liberate the people that he was called to. Paul had to go through in order to get to the people that he was called. Y'all ain't helping me today. Look at verse number 14. It says, and since he, he and since he would not be persuaded, he, we cease and said, let the will of the Lord be done. That's what, that's what we ought to do. We ought to just say, let God's will be done. And I shouldn't allow anyone to sway me off of what it is that God has told me and what God is telling me. I should not allow anyone to sway me. I should not allow circumstances to sway me. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody right now. I shouldn't allow circumstances to sway me. I shouldn't allow just because somebody says something to me or because somebody don't like it or because somebody not responding the way I want them to respond to allow that to sway me. But no, Paul said, no, I'm called. I'm called to go. And I got to go and do what I need to do no matter the problem, no matter the problems that they face, no matter the the obstacles that's in front of me because I got to get to these individuals and Paul went on his way and Paul was impactful in his ministry Lord have mercy anyone who is God assigned if you have a God assigned leader if you have a God called leader if you have a God called pastor apostle or bishop in your life prophet in your life evangelist come on if you if you're assigned to a house let me just stop with the pastor if you if you assigned to a house that that man of God that woman of God should impact your life yes sir and Paul, Paul said, Paul said, I, I got to get properly aligned so I can be able to unlock the potential that's in the people oh, that I'm called to. Lord, let me let me break this word impact down real quick. Impact. What what should what should a man of God? Come on, we we're in our sixth year anniversary. Come on, what what should what what should what should be a result? 
of you being connected to truth and love nation? What, what should be a result for you being connected anywhere? What should be a result? It should, you, it should bring that person, that individual, the person that God you should bring you some insight. Somebody say insight. It ought to bring you some insight. Yes, sir. They ought to bring you some insight. Insight to where, in, in other words, some, it, it ought to be a light bulb that goes off in your spirit. Something that you've never seen before. Something that you didn't know. And it was already on the inside. But that person unlocks that potential. Come on, I'm trying to tell you that that individual God uses, that man of God, that woman of God, to give you some insight. That's what pastors do. Uh, Jeremiah 3.15 said that their responsibility is to feed me with knowledge and understanding. They ought to give me some insight to where I should be able to see on the inside, see some things that God is desiring to do something that I didn't know, something that I didn't see, something that God is trying to reveal to me. That's where that individual they bring about some impact and impact is some insight. Number two, there should be some motivation. Yes, sir. They, they ought to motivate you. Come on. They, every now and then, they ought to push you. Come on. They ought, they ought to get behind you. See, it's one thing to encourage. It's another thing to motivate. Come on. They, every now and then, they got to get in your ear and say, let's go. Every now and then, got to say, come on, stop all of that crying. Stop all that complaining. Come on, suck it up, buttercup. Come on. Every now and then, got to motivate you and say, you know too much about them. You can't make them make me doubt them now. No, every now and then, you got to be motivated. Come on. They ought to motivate you not only with their mouth, but they ought to motivate you with their lifestyle, that when they stick to it, that when they keep on taking and licking and keep on taking, or they keep on serving, they keep on praying, they keep on worshiping, they want to motivate you to say, I am to be a follower. Oh, Paul, that's what Paul say. Paul say, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul, every now and then, somebody ought to be in your life that motivates you into being who it is that God have called you to be. They ought to continue. We're talking about impact. They ought to continue to unlock purpose in your life. Come on, unlock purpose. We exist to connect people to God. We exist to connect people to that God given purpose. They ought to unlock some purpose. Come on, you ought to be flowing in purpose. You ought to be walking in purpose. Come on, you ought to be doing what it is that God had in mind when he let you come into the earth. We are his workmanship and we've been created in him to do good work. And you ought to be flowing in your purpose. If your purpose is worship, if your purpose is exhortation, then flow in your purpose. If your purpose is teaching, then flow in your purpose. If your purpose is, is preaching, then flow in your purpose. Whatever your purpose is in the earth, if it's just encouraging, if it's just giving, if it's serving, whatever it is, they ought to be flowing in your purpose and this is what this is what a person don't do this is what Paul this is how Paul unlocked their this is how Paul unlocked their potential and then whenever this in order for this to have maximum impact there must be y'all ain't gonna like this one but that's okay it must be accountability it must be my, my relationship can't flow properly I can't be I can't be properly aligned without any accountability I can't be properly aligned whenever it is that I'm just simply, I just simply just want to do what I want to do. I just, I want, I want no account of, I want nobody to say anything to me. I want to go and come as I please. I want to, I want to do whatever I want to do. I'm big and bad enough to do because I'm grown. And everyone who's grown and who lives that way and who walks that out, here, our lives are not in proper alignment because God assigns me to somewhere. There's got to be somebody in my life that I'm accountable to. When I'm not, then I, my life is going to go off the curve. Somebody got to be able to tell you, you know what? You know, I, I know, I know what you're saying, but boo boo, come on, let me come in. Nobody here, but come on, that ain't God. Come on, I know what you're saying. Now you go on and do you. You do what you're going to do. But I'm telling you right now, based off of, based off of what you just said, that ain't the law. Somebody need to tell you that is foolish. Somebody tell you, have you lost your ever-loving mind? Somebody ought to tell you. Oh, come on. Somebody told me just last week. I, I, I made mission this other, this other day. Somebody said they was getting ready to send me an email. A long four-page letter. A long, long email. A long email. And they said right when they was about to hit sin, they said they saw the look on my face. After I read it. And they said, ah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Come on. And see, you got to be somebody in your life make you say, ah, don't worry about it. Somebody in your life needs to say, ah, I ain't even do that. Ah. And not that you, not that no one controls you. That's not control. That's not manipulation. That's not, that's, that's, that's called accountability. You see them blue lights go on. You pull, I bet you pull over. Come on here. You're a little, little old lady at Walmart tell you that this register's closed. You say, yes, ma'am. Uh, hopefully you do. Come on. So it's just, it's just somebody ought to tell you what to do. Y'all ain't gonna talk. Y'all ain't gonna talk. Yeah, I knew. I told you I wasn't gonna like it when I, before I said it. When I'm accountable, then I make covenant impact. When I'm accountable, I make covenant. I, I know. I know in our day and time that we live in that covenant is is covenant is kind of. Uh, you know, I, I make. I like you today. I don't like you tomorrow. You my BFF today. I don't, I, I can't stand her no more. I don't do her. 
We, 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 this, is my, this is my brother. This is my sister. This is my, we down. We, 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 we blood. We, we this, we that. But then some jump off. And then covenant. Come on, we can just look at our, we just look at marriage. We can just look at how, how our society feels about marriage. But here, when we talk about covenant, covenant doesn't say that every day is going to be good. Covenant doesn't say that every day everyone just things is going to flow the way I want them to flow. But when you make covenant with individual, come on, you take the good, you take the bad, you can overlook a matter. Come on, whenever you make covenant with somebody, you don't, you don't hold them, you don't hold them to a standard and hold them to a place of perfection. But no, you're in covenant. Lord have mercy. Let me keep on going. Y'all don't, y'all don't like this impact, but I'm trying to tell you in order. And in order for you to be properly aligned, my friend, in order for you to get what it is that God has for you, you have to be properly aligned so, so the individual, the people that God has assigned you to can be able to unlock your potential. Number, the last thing is just simply training. That's impact. It's training. Yes, sir. It's training. It's equipping. It's empowering. That's what Paul tells us. That's what we talked about last week, Ephesians 4.11, that God has given a gift to the body to equip us, to empower us, come on, to give us what it is that we need, that where we can be who it is that God has called us to be. I got to be trained. I can't want it my way. I got to be trained. I can't hold on to what I know and hold on to where I want to be. I can't be stuck in my comfort zone. I can't be stuck in what it is that I feel like things ought to be. But no proper, proper alignment brings about some potential and there's something in us all. Come on my friend. I didn't understand what it was that God was doing in my life until I started serving. I didn't understand what it is that God wanted to reveal in my life until I forgot about myself and got locked and loaded and began to do what it is that God was calling me to do. This is exactly what Paul is saying. Paul said, I have been put in bonds. God has allowed me to be in prison. God has allowed me to go through something so I can be able to get the word of the Lord to you. And somebody, somebody listen to me right now. You feel yourself, you are, you, you feel like the Apostle Paul, you are confined. You feel like you're in a spot, in a space the way you don't want to be in, that you want to get out of. If you had it, if it was left up to you, you'd have been done, you'd have been gone. If it was left up to you, you would have been done with it. Come on, you would have did an Angela Bassett. You would have throw up that match and lit that fire up. And 11 years, I sacrificed. Come on, if it was left up to you, you would have been up out of there. And I, I, love, I love what confined. One of the definitions, I don't think I sent it to him. One of the definitions of confinement is just simply this. The action, look at this, of confining or state of being confined. And just simply this, it, is, it speaks to a condition of childbirth. This is where this is where the thought comes from with potential. To confine, it speaks of it speaks of a woman who, who's getting ready to, 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 to have a child, getting ready to bring forth a child, getting ready to give birth to a child, and, and they're and they're they're high risk right now. And here they got to watch what they go, watch where they go, watch what they do, and they they, they confine them to the bed and say you, you don't can't do a whole lot right now because what you're carrying right now, you don't want to affect what you're carrying, Lord have mercy. What what am I trying to tell you? That here God will lock me into a situation, God will lock me into a place because I'm carrying it's not about what I'm presently going through it's about what God is trying to birth through me and here you can abort your baby yes sir you can have a miscarriage with your with the thing that God has put down on the inside of you because you don't want to be locked down oh I know you're confined to a husband oh that can't love you oh because he doesn't even know how to love himself I know you're confined to a wife that has that, that, that simply won't love you the way you desire to be loved but herself she herself is broken herself she don't know what she needs she's trying to be superwoman she's trying to be trying to be there for the kids and be there for you and she's lost herself but you're confined to that spot and what God is telling me to tell you my friend it makes no difference what you confined to God is saying don't move God is saying don't leave God is saying don't break camp because it's something I'm trying to work in you and work through you oh and you can move too fast and you can miss what it is that God is trying to do in your life I know you're on that job you can't stand that job you're trying to quit you're trying to do this and trying to do that and one of the silliest things that we do is that we quit before we have other employment. One of the silliest things we do, we, we put our notice in and start acting spotty when you don't even got another job. You don't start, you don't start talking trash until you start the other job. Come on. And then when you look, don't be looking great. Don't be come past to pray for me. Don't ask me to pray for you now. I want you to ask me to pray for you before you quit. But we don't come get counsel. We come to vent. Come on. We don't want counsel when they come. We want to quit. We want to vent. We just want to tell you what's going on. Listen, I don't want to hear what you got to say because the Holy Ghost already told me what I need to do. If the Holy Ghost told you, why the devil you talking to me? <laughs> the Holy Ghost told you, can I keep my $20? <laughs> the Holy Ghost told me, the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost take care of you. Y'all don't like that, but it's just the truth in love. <laughs> so many of us are confined. I'm preaching this thing. So many of us are confined. 
But proper alignment will unlock our potential. Man, I can think of a hundred situations I want to get out of. If I would have got out of it, I would have missed God. Uh, my, me and my wife were just talking the other day. We just celebrated and honored the life of, of Elder Leon Campbell. Y'all hear me talk about Elder Campbell all the time. Whether, whether, you, whether I mention his name or not, I'm always talking about him because I learned so much from him. I couldn't stand Elder Campbell. I'm not going to talk to him. I couldn't stand Elder Campbell. He just fuss for no reason. <laughs> I told you I, I rode my bike. This is Joe gentleman. I told you I rode my bike to the church from Dunn Avenue. You know, I was living on, on Biscayne, Mission Point. I rode my bike from Mission Point. On 295, drop my notable quotable book too. On 295, <laughs> all the way to Philippine Community Church and left my bike in the prayer tower too long. And he, <laughs> get that bike. this ain't no garage. Get your bike out of I'm like, man, I, come on, leave me, leave me alone. I went and told him to pass. He fussed at me. Come on, y'all go help me. I'm a, new, I'm a new believer fussing at me. Leave that boy alone. So in other words, man, I couldn't stand that joker. But then we started, we, we, I said, kept on hanging around, kept on hanging around. Then we started going to the prison every Sunday. Go to the prison and he's fussing about this and fussing about that. I told my I said, man, I'm tired of this man. I ain't finna, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a grown man. Nobody be talking to me like this. I'm tired. Of, I, don't, I don't let you talk to me like that. You know, you understand? I don't let nobody talk, talk to me like that. I ain't finna let no. I'm, I'm a grown man. And my wife said, no, no, no. I believe it's something that God, God is doing something. I don't know what, I don't know what kind of state I was in. She submit me to that kind of. You know I mean? So she, no, I, I don't think you need to leave. No, I don't think you need to stop going to prison because God is doing something there. And I locked in. That became one of the best relationships that I have, that I've had up to date, and it turned, it shift from me being, it shift from me being the, being offended all the time, to me actually learning and growing, and now y'all wonder why I'm so non, no nonsense now, y'all wonder why I, I don't, I can't play the rest, I told someone the other day, man, if you can preach in the prison, with Elder Camel right here at the table, sitting next to you, stopping you while you, you say something wrong, he's like, uh, 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 I mean, you, I, I can preach to a camera, I can preach to y'all, come on, I, I, little, little, little LOLs, come on, don't bother me, little, little ladies, don't bother me, when you don't preach with camera, sitting right there fussing at you the whole time but my point is had I left y'all don't like nothing it's okay I'm gonna preach myself happy can I tell you that if I would have left if I would have stopped going to the prison I wouldn't be the person that I am today I would have missed some valuable lessons that God was trying to download in my spirit I would have missed I would have missed out on relationship that God was trying to use to help me not for 2009 not for 2010 not for 2005 not for when we were going to the prison every week but God had born some lessons he wanted to download in my spirit that he can unlock some potential today to help me for today. Oh, Charles Johnson, we taught Sunday school together, standing side by side for years. Oh, and our relationship wasn't for Sunday school. Our relationship for him to help us come and renovate this building. Our relationship wasn't for then. Our relationship is for now. Y'all ain't gonna help me up in here. What am I trying to say to God? Will put people in your life that will help. They'll help you. Oh, to unlock your potential. But we move too fast. We get too overwhelmed. We feel like we can't handle it no more. We can't stand it no more. I don't need nobody telling me nothing. You just end up being a renegade all your life and end up just being someone that always run from relationships and run from trouble and run from jobs and run from relationships. Come on, God is telling me to tell you you need to slow down and you need to submit to what it is that God is trying to do in your life so he can bring you to, he can bring you some impact. You got to come into alignment the way you get some impact. Let me get up out of here. I'm just on my first point, but we have to understand you can feel you can feel like you're dejected. You can feel like you're, you're to the point the way you're downcast and you're deprived, but God is telling me to tell you don't look at where you are examine where you are the way God can be able to do what he needs to do in you and through you when you when you're in a painful situation as Paul was Paul was in a painful situation you have to you have to understand your pain we don't even process our pain long enough to be able to figure out why I'm going through what I'm going through we just don't like the pain I have to learn to understand the pain, figure out what it is that God is doing in my life. So he, because he's trying to unlock something. I have, to, I have to learn to express my pain. You know when we start expressing our pain? When we get ready to get a divorce. You know when we were expressing our pain? When our bags are already packed and we are on our way out the door. You know when we start expressing what it is that we feel? When, when, it's, when I've already had all I can stand. I can't stand no more, but I need to learn to express my pain, not to tear down, not to beat up, but to be express my pain, to be able to work through my pain. I have to, come on, I have to know this. Come on, let me say this to somebody. You have to know that you will heal from your pain. I don't care how painful it is. You will heal from your pain. You have to know that you will have the victory in spite of your pain. 
Paul was confined. <laughs> All right. Paul, Paul, was, Paul was confined and Paul was confined because God was trying to unlock something in him that Paul could in turn lock something in the people that he was sending them to. I have to know that there is a purpose for my pain. Come on, I speak this to someone. There is a purpose for your pain. There's a purpose for what it is you're going through. You don't understand it. You can't feel it right now. You can't see it, but there's a purpose for your pain. Oh, this is what we understand that for we know, I told you it's New Year's Eve night, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I have to understand my pain. And Paul told this church that he, God was sitting them to. Look what he said later on in this same chapter, chapter Ephesians chapter 3 verse 13. He says, so I ask you not to lose heart. I ask you not to faint or become despondent through fear. He said, no, don't be despondent. Don't, don't lose heart. I say that to somebody. Don't be, de don't be defeated right now. Don't lose heart. Come on, be encouraged. Don't be despondent. He says, at, at what I'm suffering in your behalf. Rather glory in it, for it is an honor to you. In other words, Paul is saying, don't, don't be despondent because you're going through, and don't be despondent because I'm going through. Because Paul understood what he was going through. It was for the people that he was called to. Lord, I'm trying to help you in here. Come on, many of us want to do ministry, but we can't do ministry being, we can't do ministry being being and being so so self-absorbed. We can't do ministry when making it all about us. We can't do ministry looking at the clock and looking at that our watch and trying to say where we going we went, no uh uh no I don't, I, can't, I don't feel like talking about it right now we want to do real ministry folk going to call you at the most unopportune time so when you want to do real ministry come on you got, you're going to be going through something yourself but you got to get yourself together be able to encourage somebody and help somebody and pray with them and it's the same person you told the last time same scripture you gave before but you want to do real ministry and help people you got to learn how to look beyond what it is that you're going through to be able to help somebody else oh but some of us too selfish but we want things just to open up for but no, my friend, God is calling us to be able to get in proper alignment so he can be able to unlock some potential in our lives. Ephesians 3, 2, look what Paul says, assuming that you've heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. Paul saying, I'm telling this church, the church at Ephesus, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming you've heard of this grace. Paul was getting ready to pray. Paul was getting ready to pray a prayer for these particular people. But he said, no, before I pray and before I tell them what it is that I'm getting ready to tell them, let me make sure they understand understand what I'm telling them or oh, when you look at Ephesians chapter 3 in verse number 1, Paul is getting ready to launch into a prayer but then verses 2 through 13 is literally a parenthesis Paul kind of stops in the middle. Oh, he's getting ready. He said, for this reason, he gets ready to pray. But then he said, no, I don't want to pray. Listen to this. I don't want to pray for application until they understand what I'm trying to tell them. Y'all missed it. Paul said, Paul said, I don't want to pray. I don't want to pray this application prayer because I'm trying to apply something to their life. But they may not even understand what it is I'm saying. So I got to stop because they're getting sleepy and they're getting weary. And they're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Paul said, before I get ready to give this application. Let me stop and let me make sure you understand what it is that I'm trying, I'm trying to taste. So this is literally a parenthesis. Look what he says in verse number three. He says, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have written briefly. What is he talking about? Briefly talking about in the previous chapter. He said, the revelation had been made known to me. What revelation? That the Jews and the Gentiles was going to be one. The revelation of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we're going to be one man. We're going to be one body. God is calling us together. This is the mystery that God has revealed to Apostle Paul. Let me hurry here. Verse four. He says, when you read this you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ verse 5 which is he said which was not to which was not made known to the sons of men in, in other generations as it has now been revealed to the to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit in other words no one saw the church they didn't see the church coming they, they know they, they talked about the millennial reign. They're talking about the coming of Christ. Talk about him coming back again. But that little gap in history, no one saw it. It was a mystery. God never showed them what was going to transpire as relates to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul said the prophets and everybody else, they, they, they didn't understand. They didn't see it. It wasn't revealed to them. But God now has us standing in the mystery. Y'all going to get in a second. Verse 6 said, this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same bodies, and the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. This is the mystery that where Jews and Gentiles come together and we're part of the same body. Verse 7, of this gospel I have made a minister. Of, of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me by the working of his power. Verse 8. 
8 said to me th- he said though though I am very though I am the very least of all the saints this grace was given to me to do what to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ verse 9 and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan and the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things verse 10 so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now might now be made known to the rulers and the authorities in heaven in place of verse 11. This it was according to the eternal purposes that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12 in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Verse 13 he says so I ask you not to lose heart. Y'all missed it. All those verses verses 2 through 13 is parenthesis. Paul says I'm, I was getting ready to pray for you. But I need to make sure that you understand that you are the mystery. You got to understand. Come on, let me make make it plain, Pastor. I I will. This is where we are right now, the year 2021. Everyone that's listening to me, everyone's under the sound of my voice. Everyone is a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God saw you down through the hallways of eternity, eternity present, and eternity future. And God said that these individuals are going to be alive in the year 2021, and they're going to be a part of my church. God saw me in my, God saw me in the future. God saw me in the beginning. God said, I see you. And this is a part of what God is saying because we are the church. And see, we people, people talking about the church age is over. People talking about I don't need to be a part of a church. I don't got to be no member nowhere. I don't got to be no, my friend. You deeper. I keep telling you deeper than the Bible because the word of God said that this is a mystery that God is trying to unleash to us. And Paul said, in order for you to be in proper alignment, I got to let you know this mystery that God is revealing. The mystery is the church. I don't know who you rolling with, my friend, but I'm rolling with the church. Come on, Jesus said upon this. Rock. I'm going to be on my church and the very gates of hell will not be able to prevail. Verse 14, he said, for this reason, now he gets back to his prayer. He said, I bow my knees before the Father for this reason, for this mystery, for you to be united, for you, for the Gentile and the Jews to come together, for the blacks and the whites to come together, or for, for the Republicans and the Democrats to come together, or for the people who who, who, who ascribe to Antifa, for the people that ascribe to Black Lives Matter, or for us to come together and to be able to say we're one in the body of Christ, not my, poli- my political affiliation but we're one in the body of Christ oh that's what Paul is saying for this reason I got to pray because I need God to be able to intertwine I need God to be able to get to intervene I need God to get involved in what it is that I'm saying Paul said I'm going to pray because I'm believing God to, for this specific purpose that you'll be able to have a light bulb to go off in your head verse 15 he says from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named every family what, what is he talking about He's not talking about family as relates to natural families. He's talking about our spiritual family. The theologians call this the universal church. And this is where so many of us miss it when it comes to the church. Because we, when, we, when we come into the body of Christ, when we come to the family of God, we're new creatures. We, we, we've been bought with a price. We've been brought into the family of God. And when I come into the family of God, when I come to the house of God, and in many sense, I have to learn to be reparented. I had to learn to be repented because because what I learned in when I learned growing prior to my experience with Jesus Christ is not worth a hill of beans in the kingdom of God. Come on, y'all go help me here. What I learned prior to, I, I love my mama, I love my daddy. That's what your problem is. You holding on to what mama them told you. You holding on to what grandma them told you. But now, my friend, you in the body of Christ, and every now and then we got to be reparented. We got to be, come on, we got to be reborn. That's what born again is. Come on, my friend, we got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And if you don't go, then come on. If, if it's not TIL Nation, if it's not a part of Truth and Love, you got to go somewhere and got to submit some to somebody. You got to submit to the Word of the Lord and allow God to retrain you. Allow God to refresh you. Allow God to revive you because you're supposed to be a part of the family of God. And this is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying because you are a part of the family of God that's written in heaven and in earth. He says, so here it is. I'm praying for the church is what Paul is saying. This is a prayer for the church. So my, my when I'm properly aligned, it'll unlock my potential. And when I'm properly aligned, look at this proper alignment birth strength. Yes, sir. This is why I need to be properly aligned because it birth strength. It, I can't, I love this progression. Read Ephesians 3 when 
get a chance. It's just a progression. He talks about this, and he said, in order for you to get this, you got to do that. In order to do that, you got to do this. It's a progression. Can't have one without the other. Come on, it's like love and marriage, love and marriage. You got to have one, but it goes together like a horse and carrot. This, I tell you, brother, come on, you can't have one without the other. I don't know about that. That's okay. I learned about it about with Ted Bundy. Oh, that's what I learned about it. I ain't know nothing about no Frank Sinatra and all that. But I'm trying to tell you that here, to be properly aligned, God will birth some strength. Look at Ephesians 3.16. Y'all tired of me today, but that's okay. It's only the second year, second Sunday of the year. Y'all tired of me, but I love y'all. I love the Lord and Jesus Christ as my Lord and my personal Savior. And I'm going to be here for the third Sunday. It be, be the Lord's will. Let me tell you. It says that, that according, look at this, to the riches of his glory. He may grant you, look at this, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner man. This is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that proper alignment birth strength. Paul is literally praying. Let me just give it to you. Paul is literally praying that God will strengthen your strength. God is literally saying that here, that what, what you're getting ready to deal with, what you're getting ready to endure, he says, I need God to strengthen your strength. Oh my God, when we're in the middle of a pandemic, what do you need? You don't need no, you don't need no physical strength right now. No, you need your, your inner man to be strong. And he said, I want your inner man to be strong according, look at the verse again, verse 16, according to the riches of the glory, according to the riches of his glory. In other words, everything that God has, everything that belongs to God. I want him to pull out of that well and I want him to give me oh, the whatever it is that I need in my strength. What am I trying to say? He owned the cattle on the thousand hill, even on the hill. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those and they that dwell therein out of that. Lord have mercy. It's, 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 one, thing, it's one thing for you it's one thing for you to be a multi-millionaire and I need some money and I, I say man, I need, will you let me hold something and you give me $20. You you gave you gave you gave me something you gave me something out of your well. You gave me twenty dollars. But then would you give me a million dollars? You gave me something according to your well. Y'all missed it. God, that person. <laughs> it's one thing if you got if you got everything you need, you only give me a quarter, you give me twenty dollars, you give me ten dollars, that's cool in the game. Thank you, I appreciate you. But if you give me something according to in in, in in light of what you have, oh my friend, that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, according to the riches of his glory, I want God to give you some strength. And that's what God is saying. God said, I'm trying to give you some strength. God said, I'm trying to give you some power. God said, I'm trying to give you some energy. God is saying, You feel like you getting ready to throw in the towel. You feel like you're getting ready to give it up. I heard, heard you earlier say, oh, we have battle fatigue. Some of us are battling and been fighting and been battling and been fighting, but God said he's getting ready to give us some strength right in the middle of where it feel like we're getting ready to give out. He said, I'm going to call your strength to be strong. Oh, God saying, I'm going to give you some power. Yes, sir. I'm going to do something for you and in you. And look what he said. And I, I love this because this is what God said. I need your inner man to be built. Come on, y'all to say that. I need my inner man to be built, not my natural man. The natural man is fading away. The natural man is passing away. I need my inner man built so I don't get, so I don't be depressed. I need my inner man being built so I don't be defeated. I need my inner man being built up, being strong so I don't be able to be discouraged and be all depressed and be all, all over the place. I need God to build up my inner man. Look what Paul said in 1 Timothy 4 and 8. He said for physical training is of some value. Useful for little. See, some of us, man, we we we'll exercise, we run, we live, we do all that, we watch what we eat. Come on here, I don't know half that stuff. My wife be eating all the time. What is that? Oh, why would you do that to yourself? What is that? And now she be trying to make me eat it. And I'm just, boy, 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 be quiet. I'm trying to keep you alive. I'm trying to keep you behind around here. Come on here, be, be trying to make me make all that, man. What is that? Come on, what what are you doing? Come on, you don't even you don't lie to me and tell me you that stuff tastes good. I don't want that. Come on here. But in other words, come on, that prophet us little. This is the scripture I use. It probably a little. Come on, you throw, throw weight all you want to. You're all big and strong and got all your little guns and all that. I'm looking all, I'm looking all, come on, Red, go to the go to the gym with me, Red. That profit you a little bit. But look at here. But 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 godliness, spiritual training. It's useful and valuable in everything. Come on here. I may can't get on the treadmill with I may can't throw no weight with you. But can I tell you to hear this one? And, and what am I trying to say? I'm just I'm not bothering nobody to exercise and work out. You keep on doing your thing. I'm gonna get in the gym too one of these days. Come on here. I, be, I, I did I did 
Five push-ups yesterday. Can I tell you to hear what God wants us to do? It, prob it promises us a little bit. But can I tell you what God desires? If we put as much emphasis on our, on our outer man as we did in our inner man, then our strength will not be fainting. Our strength will not be weary. If we put as much emphasis on our inner man by diving into the word of God and through prayer and through fasting, you know we're in the time of fasting, right? If we put some time and some intentionality on our inner man, oh, we'll be all right. First Timothy 4. And eight says workouts in the gymnasium are useful. Oh, but a disciplined life in God is far is far more so. Make you fit both today and forever. What I'm trying to do is not just for today, it's for forever. Oh, I got to skip that. I'm gonna skip that. Let me get out of here. Proper alignment, it bursts some strength. I don't know who you are. Do you need some strength? Does anybody need some strength? I know I need some strength. And Paul says it'll burst some strength. Proper alignment also it brings comfort. Proper alignment brings comfort. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. So Christ can dwell in your heart. Proper alignment brings comfort. But before you say amen too loud, I'm not talking about your comfort. I'm talking about Christ's comfort. The question on the floor is not whether or not Jesus is in your heart. The question is, is he comfortable? He's in your heart. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord, my personal Savior. He's in your heart. But is he comfortable? What, 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 what am I saying? What am I trying to say? Because, because for him to dwell, look what dwell. The dwell means it means inhabit, means to live in. It means permanent dwelling, to, to, to enter in. Look at this. To settle down. To settle. Can, can Jesus settle down or is he too busy cleaning up? Can, can, can Jesus be comfortable? Proper alignment brings some comfort. You, you know, I can live in such a way. I can watch some things. I can engage in some things. I can participate in some things that grieves the Holy Spirit, that, that causes him to be grieved. And he said, no, that don't go alone. No, you can't do this. But what we do, we, some of us, we just simply, just instead of us doing what we need to do, instead of us cleaning out our heart and cleaning out our life, we cause Christ just to settle for where we are. Instead of us coming up to his level and his standard, we pull it down to us because we're comfortable. But the scripture then never tell me I need to be comfortable. The scripture says that he needs to be comfortable. Oh, where, where, where am I taking Jesus? Is he comfortable where I'm taking him at? What am I making Jesus watch? Is he comfortable with what we watch? What am I pouring on Jesus? Jesus is like, is that Alizé? Is that, is that goose you throwing out here? <laughs> what, what, what is that? <coughs> That, that's that bad stuff anyway. They ain't even good. <coughs> what, what, what is that? What is that you what is that you put? Are you fumigating my savior? <laughs> Twas the night before Christmas. No. Pro proper alignment. I'm, I'm done. Proper alignment. Not only does it does it unlock potential, not only does it birth strength, not only does it bring comfort, not my comfort, Christ's comfort. Proper alignment increases my capacity. <laughs> it increases my capacity. Verse 18. Uh, may, may, what, 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 what is Paul praying? What is Paul saying? That may, may have strength, look at this, to comprehend with all the saints. Look at this. What is the breadth, the length, and the height, and the depth? Paul, Paul is saying, when I'm properly aligned, I'm, God will increase my capacity. God will increase my capacity for me to be able to see what it is that God is doing in the earth. I'll be able to see what it is that God is desiring to do in me and through me. To let me know that it's bigger than me. See, I can't see. I can't, I can't see. I told you, it's, it's building block. It's a progression. When I'm properly aligned, God unlocks my potential. And someone, God allows that, that individual to impact me. When I'm properly aligned, God bursts me strength. And see, I can't get to, I can't get to the capacity because I've given up. My strength is gone. And then when I'm when I'm when I when I got God giving me the strength, now I'm now I'm allowing Christ to be comfortable in me. He's dwelling in me. He's he, I'm rooted and grounded in love. And now God is increasing my capacity. What are you trying to tell me, Pastor? I'm trying to say that God has more for us. God desires to show us more. God desires to do more through us and in us. But I won't allow myself to get there. But God is saying, I'm trying to show you how strong I am. I'm trying to show you my efficacious love. 
love. I'm trying to get you to what you can be able to comprehend. You won't be able to understand it all, but God will be able to put something down in your spirit and download a word to you that what you can understand that what it looks like is not really what it is. Oh, but God is up to something. God is working something through. Oh, come on, my friend. God is saying, I'm trying to show you the breath and the length. I'm trying to show you how far my love will go. I'm trying to show you how wide my love will go. I'm trying to show you how high my love can go and how deep my love can go. Isn't that the picture of the cross and how, how wide it is, how tall it is, and how low it'll go? It doesn't matter if you go down into hell. You may feel like you're in hell right now, but God said you'll be able to understand that my love will never run out and it'll never fail. You may feel like you're way far off from the things of God, but God said my love, you'll be able to understand the breadth and the width of my love. God said no matter where you are and no matter what you're going through, I need you to understand that when you're properly aligned, God will increase my capacity. What, what am I trying to tell you? I'm saying that God can trust me more when I'm available more. God will pour out more whenever I'm available. I can't put, Lord have mercy, God can't put a bathtub anointing in a little teacup shortened spout. Here's my handle and here's my spout. God can't put no bathtub anointing in that. It, 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 it can't handle it. The capacity is not there. God won't put, oh my friend, you can't put a bathtub anointing oh, in a lake, in lake, you can't put Lake Erie in a bathtub. Oh, you can't put an uh, Atlantic Ocean in, in Lake Erie. No, my friend, you got to enlarge your territory. You got to enlarge your capacity. Oh, what am I trying to say? If I can't, if God can't trust me around people, then God not going to give me no people. What am I trying to, if God, if God don't trust me to pay my bill when I'm living in a studio apartment, God not going to be able to trust me when I'm in that 5,000 square foot house. Oh, I got to learn how to increase my capacity. I got to learn to do what I need to do the way God can get the glory out of my life. Oh, come on, my friend. We love calling down fire. We love calling in increase. We love saying I'm a naming and claiming. I'm a blabbing and grabbing. I'm a calling and hauling. But no, my friend, you got to learn how to deal with what you got. You got to learn how to seek him for and all of his righteousness. He said, then all these things will be added unto you. Come on, this your opportunity to put your hands together and give God some praise right there. I'm getting ready to roll. Getting ready to roll up out of here, y'all. I pray y'all enjoyed my little Sunday school lesson. I pray that the Lord, that the Lord has spoke to your spirit today. Because God is desiring in this year of alignment. He desiring to bring me and I. He desiring to bring you and I. He desiring to bring me. He desiring to bring you. He desiring to bring all of us into proper alignment. Because when I'm properly aligned, can I tell you that it will unlock my potential. When I'm properly aligned, God will give me some strength. When I'm properly aligned, Jesus will be comfortable. He'll be comfortable living in me. When I'm properly aligned, he enlarges my territory. And can I tell you the last thing? That proper alignment, it releases power. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach in here. I say proper alignment, it will release some power. That's what God is trying to do in our life. It's what we gonna need in 2021. I'm not going to need no cash, but no, I need some power. That's what I'm going to need in 2021. I'm not going to need nobody, nobody be in my amen corner. But no, if God give me some power, then I'm going to be all right. Look what Paul said in verse number 20. He said, now, he said, now unto him who is able to do far more abundantly. He said, now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly. I need some exceeding power. Can I tell you that exceeding is to surpass. It is to go beyond any request or outcome. God is able. See, can we stop right there? I say God is able. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know how you feel right now. Can I tell you that God can I tell you that God is able? It's a sing a song back in the day. They say, don't you know that God is able? And I'm trying to tell you that he's able. He's able to do anything but fail. I'm trying to tell you that my God, my God is able. I said, I heard. I heard Isaiah say, I heard Isaiah say that no weapon that's formed against me will be able to prosper. I heard. 
I heard Abraham say, he said, nothing, nothing is impossible. That's what God told Abraham. He said, nothing is impossible if you will believe. That's what he told Mary. He said, nothing is impossible if you will believe. He, Jeremiah said, nothing is too hard for me. I'm the God of all flesh. He's trying to give me some power so I can know that he's able. I'm not going to move till you know it. I'm not going to move till you receive it. That God is able to wipe away the tears from your eyes. That God is able to take away your hurt and to take away your pain. I said God is able to allow you to prosper even in the pandemic. I'm trying to tell you that God is able. He's able to rock you. He's able to hold you. He's able to soothe you. I said God is able to do exceeding. Then he said abundantly. What is abundantly? To overflow and to do more to do more than enough is there anybody in here is there anybody watching is there anybody in the parking lot that say Lord I want you to do abundantly I want you to do more more than enough see I don't need money just for me I need money for my children children I need money for the kingdom of God I need more I need more than enough so I can hear somebody in need and I say you know what I got you I can hear somebody bills somebody bills behind I say you know what don't worry about it can I tell you that I got you see that's where y'all faith not there see my faith is in a place the way I just won't be okay but everybody connected to me will be an overflow the way I can have more more than enough I can send you to college if I need to I can buy you a car if I need to I can be able to build you a house if I need to whatever I need God will give me what I need because he'll let me be a conduit if he can get it to me he know he can get it through me is there anybody in here that want more power he said now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly he said above he said above he said above he said above to go over and beyond he said above whatever you thinking you want to do more he said above see you just trying to get a bill pay the Lord trying to give you the whole thing he said above you just trying to get a jalopy the Lord said I'm getting ready to do something new I'm getting ready to do something fresh in your life he said above is there anybody in here that say Lord you can do whatever you desire to do he said according here it is to the power that are working in us you already got what you need on the inside this is a power of alignment power of alignment the Lord let me tap into what's already in my spirit the Lord let me tap into what he's already made available I heard I said I heard y'all don't want me to preach today I ain't feeling y'all today I said I heard I said I heard I said I heard I heard I heard I said I heard I said it so many times I forgot what I heard now. But I heard that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly. Above all I can ask or think, I'm looking for somebody in here that said, Lord, I want to be aligned with your will and your purposes. That's what I heard. I heard. I heard Jesus say, he say, now, this is how you pray. He say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give me my daily prayer. This is how alignment look. Alignment say, Lord, whatever you decide to do, you can do it. This is what alignment look like. Lord, whatever belongs to me, Lord, you can give it to me. This is what alignment looks like. Say, Lord, I'm ready to do your will. I'm ready to do what you call me to do. Come on here, somebody. You ought to give your God some glory. You ought to give your God some honor. I'm going to align my praise with his word. I'm going to align my expectation with his word. I'm going to align what I'm looking for with his word. He said in his word that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Come on, give him some praise right there. 
on behalf of everyone here at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for being a part of our online worship experience. Thank you for your participation through your likes, your shares, and your comments. But we also want you to participate when it comes down to helping us continue to push this gospel message forward. You can do so by downloading our app, and you can give there in a safe and secure way. You can go to our website at truthandlove.tv, and you can give. Or you can text the word T-I-L-JAX to the number 77977. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks for watching. Be blessed. See you next time.